Hello to everybody out there in the land of YouTube, and hello to all of my subscribers. Uh, thanks for coming by and, and watching another video. I want to discuss a couple of things today. One of them is actually a, it's a new topic. It's a, a little bit of an antenna amplifier, a DIY version that I built because the Elenco radio really isn't that sensitive to the AM stations that I can pick up around here. So I had this thing for years and I thought, well, why not show it to other people and see if uh, they want to build it and maybe check it out. Another thing is the YouTube has started doing mid-rolls on, on the videos. And I have decided to cut those out because, frankly, I don't like them and I don't think anybody else does. It's nothing worse than being in the middle of some, uh, pro you know, project video that you're trying to follow along and they, they cut everything so they can show you an ad. Um, I don't make much revenue from the channel anyways and, and I wouldn't even do Patreon because I don't think it's for the volume of material that I do that it would be justified. Although it would be nice to have a little bit of extra cash. I don't think I've actually paid for my first camera yet um, and, and it went bad so that technically this is my second camera and there's my, my third one over there. But uh, I kind of enjoy doing them anyways and they're useful, people learn from them and that gives me a lot of, a lot of satisfaction in and of itself. So I want to then discuss this Elenco radio one more time and look at getting it capable of picking up some stations and unfortunately as it is, it just is not too terribly sensitive to the weak stations that I have in my area. So I have this little contraption that I built I don't know how many years ago from some old radio parts, with, namely this variable capacitor, and about a hundred feet of magnet wire, and it is a antenna amplifier. And you can see it's definitely DIY. I just had some, I guess, one-inch dowels and half-inch dowels, drilled holes appropriately, cut some little pieces of a uh, of wood out, put some uh, some plywood up here, mounted everything to it and uh, it really works. It's, it's very simple to make and I'll talk about, uh, well, I'll start, let's start talking about it right now. The actual circuit, well there is no circuit, to, well it is a circuit. So this is the device, I just did a quick drawing of it in my printer. I was trying to print some photos yesterday on a laser jet with supposedly laser jet capable photo paper and you can see that my laser jet is still cleaning itself off. What I did is I just took some dowels, and these are, I think, half-inch dowels going this way, and then there's a one-inch dowel up here. Of course, uh, not to scale. And I put a little variable capacitor on here. And all you have to do with this is take a few pieces of wood and make a square that is, that's two inches on each side, so or two inches, two feet from here to here. So you're going to have a have two feet, two feet, two feet, and two feet. And for the rest of the world that is using a really sensible method of of measurement, it's 61 centimeters. Actually, I think it's 60.96 centimeters, but 61 is close. Mine is actually a little bit larger because I made it from wood, and it expands and contracts, so it changes the the inductance of the of the device. So two feet on a side, which means that you're going to have a total of eight feet all the way around of whatever wire you use. What wire? Anything that you have. Pretty much anything you have. I've, obviously I wouldn't use like a, a one gauge or a two gauge or a three gauge wire. I'm using uh, a number 22 magnet wire for, for mine because that's what I happen to have had at the time. And you're going to wrap it around 11 times. So once you get the 11 times, then you can connect it to your your capacitor, your variable capacitor, and usually these old variable capacitors can be found in radios, and they should have a tunable range of 25 picofarad up to 450 picofarad, so that gets you the entire AM range. And this is just a big inductor, and when we get the capacitance right with the inductance, makes it a big resonant circuit, and it makes it very sensitive to one set of frequencies. It is directional, so it's going to be directional along the axis. So what you want to do is 
point it towards your antenna or towards the radio station that you want to pick up and just turn it a little bit and then uh, as you need to you can make the adjustment. I do want to mention that on these old radio uh, variable capacitors like this one that one of the connections is actually on the body and that's this one so it's just underneath the screw on here and the other connection is actually going to be to the variable capacitor so one one set of plates is the ground plates the other set of plates is the variable plates so that makes it up and you'll need about an extra couple of feet of material for the uh, the leads to go to the caps and I, I left uh, actually four feet I think I wrote four inches on here uh, yep I wrote four inches it should be four feet so four feet or 1.2 meters of wire so that you can get from your your last wrap after you get the 11 get down here to the center and be able to pick up uh, the station and, you know get everything connected up so you can tune it so let's go see how it works well it's the middle of the afternoon here which means that I'm not going to pick up a lot of stations this one is about 60 or 70 miles away and you can actually perhaps just hear the station coming in and it, it's very weak so what I would like to do is take my antenna amplifier my DIY antenna amplifier and go ahead and put it into the loop and by doing that you can hear that the signal is definitely a little bit higher and to prove that to you that it's actually the antenna amplifier doing this if I change the tuning you can see that the station has actually disappeared now and the way you can find out what station you are actually going to be listening to is if you ch pick a random point on the on the dial so let's put it about halfway and tune through here that point where you're getting the most static is the frequency that you're going to be amplifying because it's picking up the static in the air and amplifying that so it's a pretty simple device it's just resonant at whatever frequency the inductance and the capacitance are tuned to and this will cover the entire AM band plus a little bit extra on either side the way it works the way the antenna amplifier works is that it becomes resonant at a particular frequency that resonance is going to be determined by the value of this inductor which will be around 200 micro henry and the capacitor which can vary anywhere from about 10 or 15 picofarad up to roughly 400 so by tuning the knob I change the resonant frequency when this antenna becomes resonant and it's a very large antenna so it's got a lot of area to pick signal up but when it becomes resonant it actually re-radiates its signal in the form of an electromagnetic wave so we have a big antenna system re-radiating a signal so it's, ca it's catching the signal over a much larger area and then it's going to re-radiate the signal into our smaller antenna so we have big antenna sensitive to one frequency at resonance it re-radiates the signal and gets picked up by our smaller antenna and of course still by tuning it we can change the resonant frequency and where the signal is re-radiated at this loop antenna can also act as a direction finder it's going to have the strongest signal pickup along its long axes so it's either going to pick up a strong signal in that direction or one in this direction coming towards the camera it's going to have nulls where it's not sensitive at all on the plane going across in this direction so if we are looking for a station what we can do is find out where the strongest signal is coming from so imagine the strongest signal is coming from along this plane two choices here or there we reposition ourselves move the antenna over and get to the strongest signal again and now we have the original plane was this way now we can say we have another strong signal this way so it's very likely that where those two lines intersect that 
is where our radio station is. So this is that direction finding stuff that you see in all the old World War II movies. They would usually use a third position called, and then it would be triangulation, and you'd get a better position of whatever it was you, you were looking for. And it's pretty easy to make, as I said, it's just a bunch of, of wire, whatever gauge you decide on. You can use just your know, regular hookup wire, you could use stranded wire, whatever is the cheapest thing for you. If I were to do this again, I would make it out of something that isn't going to expand, like wood. Perhaps I would do PVC, but this works very well. And one of the things that you, you really should do, and the way I did it was to actually just file little notches into the bottom of the wood and see if we can see that. But I filed small notches into the bottom of the wood, each of them about one eighth of an inch apart. And then I ran the wires through those notches and I made the same notches on on all four corners and that way the wires would stay in place and not cross. So, build a square, two feet by two feet, wrap wire around it 11 times, leave a little bit extra to go to the center, find yourself an old radio tuning capacitor and you have an antenna amplifier. Remember, this is a directional device so you kind of have to point it towards wherever your station is. And one of the things that you might want to do is if you take the time and go through here and find stations on both of these dials simultaneously, make yourself a little dial so you can get tune in a little bit faster and don't have to wait. And oh, one thing I want to point out, notice that there is no static now on my AM radio, and that's because I took the IC out. That IC was actually causing oscillations, even though we had the capacitor put into the back that was supposed to prevent it. Took the, took the capacitor, or the, the amp out, put this in, and it worked great. Another thing that I did is I used the uh, Handyman's Miracle uh, of uh, duct tape, and put some duct tape on there, about four or five layers, and Then I, then I cut the center so that I would have the, uh, the tape laying in there on the sides and I pulled out that little center piece. So I cut at the top, I cut at the bottom, pulled out the rest, and now I have a nice snug fit for the radio until I decide to make something a little bit better. Well, that was it. Just wanted to tell you, no more mid-rolls and a uh, nice little antenna amplifier DIY type of thing. Hopefully you'll you know, you build one, mess around with it, and you can build them for other radio frequencies, of course. Uh, this is easiest for the AM band because AM antennas are vertically polarized, and this is a vertical system. FM is circular polarization, but it sh you'll still be able to build one a little bit different. One thing I do need to point out before I, you know, I forget. You want to make sure you put that antenna into the loop. So if you build something out of a solid piece of wood, Make sure you leave a slot where you can put the antenna for the radio that you're trying to tune. Makes things a little bit easier. Well, thanks again for your time. I appreciate you, your watching, and hopefully you'll subscribe. In a week or two, I hope to put out a video on IGBTs, Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor, so it's a power handling device. And it's kind of that unique hybrid of a bipolar junction transistor and a MOSFET. So hopefully uh, you'll, you'll enjoy that when it comes out. Until then, take care, and thanks for watching.